Thank you for inviting us to share with you the history of the Rosie Reds organization. We are honored to be a part of the Cincinnati Reds history and the Cincinnati Public Special Speaker Series this summer to celebrate the 150 years of Reds baseball. As the Rosie Reds also celebrate a milestone with 55 years of incorporation in 2019. Thanks to Brian Powers for including the Rosie Reds organization today. So first off, we just wanted to know if there's anyone who loves Reds baseball. <laughs> if there's anybody that loves the Reds specifically. If you like also meeting other people who enjoy Reds and, the, and baseball. If you do, then you should also in turn join the Rosie Reds. The Rosie Reds mission is simple, but has expanded over the years. We are a philanthropic and social organization focused on supporting the Cincinnati Reds. You might be aware of some of our history, but today we will share a little bit more. The Rosie Reds organization was formed in 1964 when there was a danger of the National League franchise being moved out of Cincinnati. The city of Cincinnati became aware that the Reds owner, Bill DeWitt, was contemplating moving to another city as attendance was lagging. He felt the fans had parking difficulties and broadcasters weren't promoting the Reds. So they were to blame for the lack of attendance at Crosley Field. Cincinnati Unlimited, a Cincinnati chamber group, organized the Committee of 40, which had leaders from P&G, Kroger, Frisch's, Crosley Broadcasting, etc., consisting mainly of men, but did have three women, Jeanette Hines from WCKY, Ruth Lyons, and Marge Zimmer, wife of CG&E owner. The goal of this committee was to grow Crosley field attendance to one million during the 1965 season. This committee of 40 broke into subcommittees to focus on certain areas, including corporate and civic club involvement, traffic, problem, traffic and parking problems, and women's participation, or lack thereof. During a particular meeting, Hank Zurich, the Reds PR director, conducted a survey as to why women weren't attending games at Crosley Field. Some of the feedback Hank received was the park was located in a bad part of town, too few seats on opening day, parking and safety concerns, bad concessions, inadequate bathrooms, and rude men smoking cigars. One subcommittee was quickly formed by Mrs. Hines and Mrs. Zimmer, who co-chaired the Women's Committee for the Cincinnati Reds of Cincinnati Unlimited. And that really slides off your tongue very easily. Some of the influential ladies on the committee consisted of Mrs. Walton, or Ida Bachman, who was the wife of the mayor of Cincinnati, Mrs. Theodore Johnny Berry, wife of a Cincinnati politician who later became mayor, Mrs. Bill DeWitt, wife of the Reds owner, Mrs. Stanley Page Kess, the only daughter of Pal Crosley's Jr., deceased owner of the Reds, Mrs. Herman Ruth Lyons Newman, the local TV host, and Mrs. Joan uh, uh, Perky, uh, the player's wife of Bob Perky. They brainstormed on how to get more women to the ballpark. Their ideas included packaging a deal with dinner and a bus trip to the game. Second was a cocktail party to kick off the women's committee, followed by the ball game. And another was include the players, wives, and families in activities. Or develop a mascot to go along with Little Red Man. Or have a tour of Crosley Field. And our all-time favorite was encourage the Reds to sign young, eligible ba uh, baseball players eligible bachelors as players. So that's always good for the women here. The level of enthusiasm in the women's committee grew and the Rosy Reds was born. The first ladies of the Rosy Reds had strong connections to the city and the Reds organization. The saying goes, never underestimate the power of a woman. Mary Leona McCarthy, who was the editor of the Montgomery Reporter wrote, if a woman's organization is needed to help bring the pennant to Cincinnati next fall, I suggest that Bill DeWitt make room for the flag at Crosley Field. This one is bound to be successful. The ladies drew up bylaws and signed incorporation papers on July 31, 1964. Their 
first social was at the Cincinnati Club with a dinner and dance to unveil the new Rosie Reds organization, followed by a game at Crosley Field and also unveiled the new Rosie mascot, all at a cost of $8. They also introduced the acronym Rosie, which stands for Rooters Organized to Stimulate Interest and Enthusiasm in the Cincinnati Reds. Jeanette Hines and Margaret Zimmer were very motivated to grow the new organization. The first membership campaign began in, in October 1964, being marketed as a female organization open to all women of all ages and all walks of life, single, married, and divorcees. Dues began at $5 and now rest at only $30 annually. The first innings of fashion were held at Map Mabley and Carew the day before opening day of 1965 with the two founders participating in the pregame ceremony. Here you can see Johnny Bench, Ted Klazuski, Nancy Siever, Mr. and Mrs. Ted Abernathy, and from left to right, Gordy Coleman, Joe Nuxall, and Ted Klazuski. To share some additional pictures with you, the success of the Rosie Reds was featured in a story in 1967 with Mr. Redlegs. So as president of the Rosie Reds, we do receive thank you letters every year from the colleges that we donate to. This one is from our donation of $500 in 1969 from the athletic director at UC. Our donation amounts have continued to increase whenever our fundraising has become more successful. President Carol Ross, presenting the Ruby, presenting Ruby Rapp, who was the owner of the Barney Rapp Agency, with the first honorary membership for all she had done for the Rosie Reds. In 1970, the fashion shows continued with Sparky and Marge leading the entertainment. So there's several pictures, there's Sparky, uh, there's several other individuals you might recognize there, and there's uh, Marge and, and Sparky. The shows at the Rosie Reds um, at events, and we had many of them back then. It was uh, an event at Kings Island. And then this one shows President Carol Ross um, presenting the plaque to the Atlanta manager in 1971. Marge also wrote a letter to the Rosie Reds with a thank you for all that we have done for the Reds in promoting their, uh, in supporting their organization. This shows the last known invite in 1986 to the fashion show. And then again in 2008, a uh, letter inviting members to purchase uh, discounted tickets for the unveiling of the new mascot, Rosie Reds. So that brings us to where we are today. We have done our best to carry on the traditions of the Rosie Red founders, but times do change. Marge Schott was a huge supporter of the Rosie Reds and encouraged all Bob players to participate in our events. Sadly, with collective bargaining agreements and changes at MLB, the owners can't do this anymore, and we had to adapt. Players now typically only need to make three appearances per year or whatever they have written in their contract. But we are lucky the Reds are a great partner for the Rosie Reds. We do have players who have committed, who have continued to support us, including Tom Browning, Scooter Jeanette, Amir Garrett, and others. Our charter, charter allows for up to three members, with membership being at full capacity, for many years during the 1970s and 1980s. Our membership does swing with the Reds' success, so we currently have just under 2,000 members supporting us today. We have now expanded to include men and children because we want anyone to become a member who wants to support the continued growth of baseball. We have 75% women and 25% men. Our board consists of a president, a vice president, secretary, treasurer, and three members at large that handle volunteers, marketing, and social media, with a total of 21 trustees designing and coordinating events. We entered into the electronic age in 2015 with online membership. We still use snail mail, but many of our events and news are sent via email or on our Facebook group. So among our events, the fashion show unfortunately is no longer offered, but we did celebrate the 50th anniversary in December of 2014 with a formal evening event with Ron Oster being our keynote speaker, along with uh, attendance was Jeff Picoro, Chris Welsh, and other celebrities attending. 
We continued that celebration at our annual luncheon in January with an ice sculpture with uh, Mr. Tom Browning, Mr. Perfect, being the uh, keynote speaker at our luncheon. Then the Finley Market Opening Day Parade is a huge event for uh, everyone here in Cincinnati, uh, especially for the Rosie Reds. Uh, it's always been a huge event for us. Um, we decorate a trailer with members riding, walking, and Rosie Reds herself is always on the trailer with us. The opening day celebration uh, tradition, there's a picture of me presenting a plaque to Brian Price and Bill McKecker of Philadelphia Phillies in 2017. And Valerie is presenting to David Bell and Clint Hurdle of Pittsburgh Pirates uh, earlier this year. Our annual luncheon at GABP held in the Fox Sports Club that hosts about 300 members with some great keynote speakers. We had Tom Tushia, the sculpture of the Pete Rose statue along with the other statues on the, on the concourse. He was our keynote speaker in 2017. I was lucky enough to be able to see him at work at his shop in his studio and jokingly asked him if he would put Rosie Red somewhere on the statue. He did, so you'll have to find it yourself. Welcoming the Rosie Reds on the scoreboard uh, was a uh, luncheon that Dick Williams spoke at. Two separate luncheons he provided entertainment for us and um, in 2016 and 2017 he brought um, several players with us. So uh, each, each luncheon featured three different players and um, our members could get pictures with them uh, and some Q&A with them too, which was a lot of fun. Our events do change each year. Through our partnership with the Reds, we provide members the opportunity to, pur to, pur to purchase excuse me, opening day tickets packaged with two other games. We have hosted meet and greets with various players, Scott Shevler, Sal Romano, and Amir Garrett with only 50 Rosy Reds winning the opportunity to get their picture taken with them and ask some Q&A. Other events include discounted games in the Fox Sports Club, the Rosy Reds traveling to different ballparks each year with one to two buses of fans. This year we went to Cleveland a couple of weeks ago, got a winner, an ins and outs tour of Great American Ballpark in the summer, and a cruise on the B&B Riverboat in the fall. Membership does include two free tickets from the Reds as their guest in late summer. All members get to participate in an on-field parade prior to that game, which usually has about 200 members walking with their families. We have two consistent important events each year. One is the night the president presents the $4,000 check to Paul Kramer of the Kid Glove Association. The next is the endowment day, which occurs on the last Sunday of each of the excuse me, on the last Sunday home game each year. The coaches and a player from each college are invited to appear on the field at Great American Ballpark with the Rosie Red Board. Each of them are introduced and received their endowment checks to use for whatever purposes helps their baseball program. Each year uh, ends with the Rosie Reds having a booth at Reds Fest. Uh, Reds management has ensured that the Rosie Reds uh, the Rosie Reds mascot represents our organization as well since 2008. Personally, Rosie is a phenomenal lady, but she is an incredible representative for the female families and beloved by kids of all ages, and we all do love her. In 2018, the Rosie Reds had an exciting opportunity to part, partner with the Reds Community Fund to help build the Bernie Stowe Field. If you didn't know Bernie Stowe, he worked for the Reds since he was 12 and eventually became senior clubhouse and equipment manager. A tradition now carried on by his son Rick in the uh, um, Reds clubhouse and then Mark who handles the visitors clubhouse. This partnership allowed the Rosie Reds to sponsor the construction of the dugouts with our donation of $40,000 at the Bernie Stowe Field at Gilday Recreation Complex on River Road is where it's located. With Priscilla Stowe being an original R Rosie Red, it became a dual honor for us to participate. Charlie Frank, who is the Executive Director of the Reds Community Fund, was thrilled we were participating in this important project with the Community Fund. The field was dedicated in May 2018. In addition, we are great partners with the Reds Hall of Fame, 
as they provide the Rosie Reds with discounted membership costs. In 2019, we were again honored to be asked by Rick Walls, Director of Hall of Fame, to sponsor a showcase in the newly renovated Hall of Fame. As folks know, it is one of the best halls of best Hall of Fames next to Cooperstown, and we are proud to be a partner. To end with, the most important reasons the Rosie Reds exist today. To support the Cincinnati Reds, to support the Powell Crosley Kid Glove Organization, where we donate $4,000 each year to Mr. Paul Kramer, Executive Director, and the nine area universities who receive $3,000. In closing, we'd like to thank Brian Powers and the Cincinnati Public Library for allowing us to share a little history about the Rosie Reds as we are celebrating 55 years of incorporation in 2019. Memberships are still available for 2019, and we would love to have anyone become a member. Thank you.